just going to go through the different options of hanging a gate. The first option you have here is a galvanised gate post, which is a very common way of hanging a gate and a very good way of hanging a gate. Um, you dig a hole approximately 600 mil square and um, approximately 600 deep and you set the post in concrete. And it's, it's a very common way of, of hanging a gate. Now the RSJ din is the next one. Um, if ground is suitable, it can be driven into the ground. But often when you, when you decide to hang a gate by driving either the RSJ or the steel beam, you might have to go to plan B and dig a hole sometimes and set them in concrete if, if you meet bad ground or if you don't go solid enough. This is a, a heavy PDM straining post. Um, it's 10 inches in diameter, it's 8 foot long, it's um, in suitable ground, it's an excellent way of hanging a gate as well and you get a very long life out of it. And then going back to the old sleeper, still a lot of lads using the old sleeper. Um, you see sometimes lads will point them and drive them but then again they can twist and you might have to go to plan B again and um, dig a hole and set them in concrete. Then you have an 8 by 8 8 foot long PDM square gate post. It is normally used to hang a, a, a timber gate, um, sort of more fancier gates than, than your traditional farm gate. You have the half moon shaped one here which is when your post goes perfectly straight you can put it onto your, your round post and this is sort of self-explanatory. It's for your square gate post, as is this, for your round gate post, it goes round it. This lad here is for your RSG. Um, those two are for where to be a concrete pair. And those lads are the ones that are used mostly. Um, the way these are used, normally when you when you when you drive your timber gate post with a post driver or digger. Sometimes it can go off maybe slightly and there is a bit of play in those. You can lever it in and out with them. It's just a matter of, of um, drilling your post and fishing them through it and your two nuts and washers then allow you to give it a little bit of play in and out on the post. And I suppose as far as the tools is concerned, really you don't need many tools. Um, a measuring tape, an adjustable spanner, a grow bar, a spirit level, a shovel and a spade. And a straight edge is actually important when you're hanging a gate too. It's been hung here on this pathway. Um, I've measured out my two holes. They're approximately, or they are 13 and a half foot apart. The two posts will be to take the 13 foot gate. Um, the holes are 600 by 600 and just over 600 deep. So this is a galvanized gate post. It's going to be set in concrete. Uh -huh. It's in the center of the, of the hole. The ground is slightly higher up there. The farmer in this situation wants the gate hanging both ways. So we have to ensure it's not going to drag off that ground. Um, I find the best way to do that is to use a straight edge. Put the straight edge where the bottom of the gate is going to be on the bottom hanger. We level it. Okay. That's the straight edge level. Now we need to ensure that the straight edge at a level open out. So we're now ready to set it in concrete. I'm going using a, a quick set in concrete here today. It comes in bags. Um, it sets in five to ten minutes so we need to work quite fast when we're at it. the water you need to mix it it's important to tramp it in and mix it well 
get a solid finish. However, we're gate fitted now, and those hangers, if it wasn't level, perfectly level and plumb, there's a little bit of give in them. We can let it out a little bit on the top, or in a little bit, with the two nuts. But um, in this situation, we don't need to do that, because everything has worked out perfect. And your, the gate is, is perfectly level. And just another little thing that you've noticed around the countryside, some farmers are inclined to hang gates upside down. The small, the small boxes are always at the bottom for smaller stock. The depth is good. Everything is fine. So this post now is, is ready to set also. We're happy that everything is right. So we need to just do the finishing touches and tighten up the brackets. I do give a little twist on each side. It should come in even. We shouldn't put the plumb of the gate off. Another feature on this gate is um, it's an anti-opening device. So it can't open till the latch is turned upside down. That's the only way it can open, which means that in wind or cattle scratching and that, you know, it's nearly impossible for an animal to turn the latch upside down to open the gate. I suppose when you're finished, another tip is when your gate is hung, if it's hung properly, your gate should, there's a little bit of wind here today, but your gate should stay still in any given position. Any given position, your gate should not move. 